Okay, here's a board I've designed for my Reagan's Revenge synthesizer. Uh, looks okay, as far as I know. Let's check out the old 3D model. I said, let's check out the 3D model. And there she is. You can see we got our headers and some a few chips. I didn't put that one in, that one in, or that one in. Oh well, right? Wrong. Wrong. So, oh, and here it is in Fusion. So I, I exported that 3D model into Fusion 360 so I could see what was going on. And that was how I determined these curves, by the way. That's why they have, have those curves to fit around the MIDI connector and capacitors and, you know, miscellaneous other connectors. So I was thinking about how would I, I, I fit this board in into a mechanical design. Well, um, so the boards came in and I, I soldered them up. The damn thing doesn't work. And here's why. Check this out. It's low here, it's high here. Why? Because we're hitting this chip. And of course I didn't account for the socket either. Why not? Why bother? It's just a socket. Well, apparently that height matters. And so this little disaster, is, it's cost me so much time and it's unneeded. All I had to do was take more time with the, um, the 3D viewer and I would have caught all this stuff. So let's just say I've learned to take the 3D viewer very seriously. This could be the biggest uh, tip of all PCB design, and it's take your big, fat, sweet time with the 3D model. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So here's a PCB. I just finished the first draft of the layout. And I say first draft pretty lightly. I mean, it needs a lot. Of, I know it's not done. I know I have mistakes in it. The problem is it's kind of hard to make heads and tails of what's going on on this thing. You know, it's a big disaster. And, and among other things, just like the name of the board, the encoder exploder, which this will be a, uh, a four, four encoder I2C board uh, for, for prototyping I'll be selling soon. And um, you can't even see the text on that. Like this perspective is, is pretty fried. And also, in, especially in this current state, uh, the emphasis between the bottom layer and the top layer, this is actually a four layer board, but I'm only using bottom and top, the middle two are ground. But um, the bottom and the top layer kind of have equal emphasis. Red and green are equally bright. That's a problem. So it really kind of distorts what you actually see. So like in KiCad, it's with Alt 3. Yeah. All right, now here, this tells a whole, paints a whole lot different picture. And it's very important to slow down. Oh, uh, Robert Fernick from Fedevel Academy, uh, one of my favorite YouTube channels. Um, in, in his, uh, one of his series, is, is, is it might have been a Udemy uh, course I took of his. Uh, he spends so much time on, on the 3D model and like he'll get everything down to like the tenth of a millimeter. So for example, he, he has to be sure that this capacitor right here is within a tenth of a millimeter what he, what he expects it to be. And at first I was kind of like, who the hell cares? But I've kind of gotten uh, my ass handed to me recently and I'll, I'll talk about that here in a minute. But it's so important to just take your, take your time with this because beyond holding a physical PCB, which you know, you're gonna pay whatever, $2, $5 for the PCB, originally $17 shipping for me. And then when you get it, you look at it and within 30 seconds you go, ah, shit. It happens to everybody. And almost all those, if you're holding it in your hand and you haven't actually soldered it or used continuity or whatever, um, you can you can achieve that exact same type of inspection by just looking at the at the three D model here. So um, let's just take a time and kind of and kind of go through the process here. Now I'll just start in this corner. All right, all those are laid out good. I can tell what all the resistors are. Sometimes it's really easy to to mix up if you have two resistors very close together. It's not particularly clear which one's R20 and which one's R16. Luckily, in this case, it is. Now, I don't have encoders yet. Guess what? This thing will not be done until I have encoders, um, uh, encoder 3D models on here. And there's reasons for that. Again, we'll get to another section. But um, we're just kind of looking around. Well, here's the first one. This is a 3-volt regulator. We're going to knock 5 volts down to 3 volts. It's not going to pull that much current. But uh, look how big of a pad they've given us for this. It turns out this pad and this pad are connected. But I only have one via. And I have, I have a kind of a smaller um, uh, track here, and I'm, I'm going on the bottom layer to get over here. But if I'm going to have this, if they're going to give me this big fat pad, then I might as well use a big fat um, uh, track on there. And so, I, and, and with a big fat track, we need a few more vias. Uh, vias are limited in, in the amount of current they can handle. Again, I don't think we're taking any chances here, but why not be on the safe side? So we need to add some vias here. 
Um, and I'm not going to make all those changes in this video. I'm kind of just showing you what I would do. Now, for example, uh, here's a header. What is this header? Uh, what do these pins do? I have nothing on there. Nothing. That's horrible. That's a huge mistake. Now, I know that connects to the clock and the programmer. Uh, this is a JTAG or SWD, whatever it is, the program, the EFM8 on here. But um, I don't really only need two pins. I'm kind of, I have to use this. I don't want to. I'd rather just use this thing. Wait, wait. Transform. Wait. Ah! No! No! You're seeing my messy desktop. What a, a extreme shock. Let's try that again. <laughs> Transform. So we have a clock, we have a data, we have a ground here. I don't want to have to be troubleshooting those later. And when, when I'm actually working on the board, I want to get to it and get busy. When I have to come back to the computer and search things and hit data sheets, it, it slows me down. So how you have to get these labeled. And same thing here, actually. It turns out with, a, with this disaster 20-pin connector I have, I really only believe I need two or three pins, I hope. It's kind of a guess. This is the first time I've used this microcontroller. And so it'd be nice to know what those pins are. They should be labeled. And right now they're not. But just looking around more, uh, you can tell when stuff is jumbled up, smashed together. Well, here's an example. It's supposed to say I2C out, and it looks like it says I2C um, uh, below it somehow. So the silk screen needs to be finished. Um, another thing I'm going to fix, I have some kind of bug where these are all female headers. At least there's a bunch of female headers. I'm, I want no female headers on this board. Sorry, you uh, progressives. We're going with male on all of it. It's a lot cheaper and a lot easier to deal with. Um, anyway, so um, just looking around, you know, this looks, these encoders are all the same, all four of them, so that's no big deal. Um, I've got a lot of extra space. I clearly have, you know, uh, extra thingies here, uh, extra space I could knock off here. Um, selector. Now, these would be jumpers to allow switching between uh, the user can use I squared C using this microcontroller for all four encoders. That way they can use uh, all, eight, all, all four encoders with only two wires and ground that's the idea and then in power and then the other way uh would be to not use the jumpers and then you have this, the conventional eight uh pin approach for, for four encoders um so in case you want to do all the coding and all the the, the mumbo jumbo on your own microcontroller you can it's nice to have the option well we'll have jumpers for that well this selector is, is, doesn't tell us anything and it kind of blends in with my logo too much so one of them needs to go. Maybe selector could go down here. Maybe the logo could go, go up here. So you get the idea. I'm kind of getting in, uh, in too much detail on in my exact situation here. But I, I would say on any given board taking, I don't know, 10 minutes uh, to stare at this thing, it's so worth it because like, it's expensive to make PCBs. And even in the, the modern era with the JLC PCB and, and PCB way and those kind of guys, uh, it's cheap to make them, but then the shipping ends up being out of control. So, and, and you know, uh, even on a good day when I, I pay for the DHL sh uh, shipping, it still ends up, you know, taking a week. So it just doesn't make sense to, to make dumb mistakes. When I could, things I could fix where I could get the board to do exactly what I want to do, I should do that now. And I'm the world's worst about rushing through and trying to get, you know, I'm going to hurry, go, 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 go. But, but this is a time to get you a little drink out and just take your time. <laughs>